So now that we've looked at a lot of the macroscopic structures of plant anatomy, we're going to go on the microscopic side of things by looking at different types of plant cells. So we'll entitle this next flowchart Plant Cells 1. And in this flowchart, we're not going to explicitly be looking at a plant cell type, but actually a structure within plant cells that makes them very distinct, makes them very, very characteristic as plants. And that would be the cell walls that they possess. So this is something we've seen for a very long time, as long as, you know, elementary school where we've studied cells, we know that plant cells have cell walls. But now we're going to look deeply at the structure of these cell walls and see why plant cells have really chosen this very specific uh, characteristic, key characteristic, I would say. And that key characteristic is what simply differentiates them uh, from animal cells as a whole. As we go through this, take a look at figure 6.27 to really get drive home the point uh, that we'll be making as we look at the different types uh, or structure of cell walls. So speaking of that structure, that's our next step here. Let's look at the structure of a cell wall. Uh, firstly, what we'll look at is the idea of a primary cell wall. So I'll write it out as this first, and then I'll do the abbreviation of one degree sign for primary cell wall. Now, primary cell wall, first and foremost, is found in all, all plants. There's a reason I'm mentioning this, because there will be parts of the cell wall that will not be found in all plants, but the primary cell wall is certainly found in all of them. Its composition is much like you would expect. Different uh, components within this are things that we've already covered. Um, its composition is mainly of the, that very important structural polysaccharide polymer known as cellulose. It also consists of polysaccharides, there other polysaccharides, not just cellulose, so polysac for polysaccharides, and it also has some proteins within it. But the main sort of structural, I would say, component is the cellulose. Cellulose provides that strong structure that cell walls have. But it's not going to be incredibly strong. It's not going to be overbearingly strong because of the following. The primary cell wall is an interesting component because the growing plant cell as it's growing, as it's developing, growing plant cell is going to actually secrete a thin, flexible primer, primary cell wall. A thin and flexible, still somewhat strong, but st has this component of thin and flexible primary cell wall. Now, this is interesting because what's going to happen is this cell wall, this primary cell wall, can actually stretch and also expand. And that's a very good function to have, a very good result of this thin and flexible nature because what's happening is the plant is growing. The plant cell is growing, thus the plant tissue is growing, thus the plant is growing as a whole. So if it can stretch and expand, this allows the cell wall to increase in size as the plant cell increases in size. Increase in size simultaneously with this plant cells growing increase in size as well. And then finally, if we look at a grow, so we've looked at a growing plant cell, we can actually now focus on a mature plant cell, one that is completely done with its growing. The mature plant cell is going to have the following situation. The primary CW for cell wall solidifies or thickens. This is where we get that nice structural component essentially. Solidifies or it can thicken. Not completely, let's say, solid, but just get a lot thicker than it was. Um, and then if this happens, there's, this is sort of the end of the primary cell wall then. Or it can actually move forward with its development. It can actually move forward and become a secondary cell wall, a secondary CW forms. So either the primary cell wall becomes hard, it thickens, or it turns into a secondary cell wall. So let's look at that. What is a secondary cell wall? Secondary cell wall. So that's basically our next step here. A secondary cell wall is going to be, and location's important here. A lot of exam questions, make sure you understand the location of things. Here, I would definitely remember this. This secondary cell wall is going to be between the plasma membrane and the original, let's say, primary cell wall. So it's the next logical step. Primary cell wall, secondary cell wall, then plasma membrane. So 
From here, what we have is a different composition now. A different polymer is going to be here. It's no longer going to be mainly cellulose. It's actually going to be something uh, even stronger. And that composition is going to be of lignin. L-I-G-N-I-N. -I -I That's going to be our main component of a secondary cell wall. What is lignin? Lignin is a very good strengthening polymer. So the cell wall, I like to think of the secondary cell wall as a stronger version of the primary cell wall. So it's a strengthening polymer, contains many monomers that create strength in the unison to give you lignin, which is within a secondary cell wall. Of course, you can already imagine the secondary cell wall functions mainly in support and protection because of this strength, uh, strengthening polymer known as lignin, and also what you'll notice is the following. Wood is typically going to be mostly secondary cell walls. Wood is so hard and strong because it consists of mostly secondary cell walls. Thus, it consists mostly of lignin, a strengthening polymer. So we can also extend that knowledge by saying that this is just, wood is strong because it's mostly just a lignin polymer, because it's mostly secondary cell walls. And then finally, just last thing I want to say, secondary cell walls is not, not in all plants. So the non-woody plants, you would say, don't usually have secondary cell walls. Primary cell walls, on the other end, in all plants. Secondary cell walls, not in all plants. Finally, last structural component of the cell wall to look at is something known as the middle lamella. The middle lamella is going to be important for, I would say, this idea of... Um, uh, fruits. Fruits are going to have a big role in the middle lamella, as we'll see in just a second. The middle lamella, excuse me, is between the primary cell walls uh, of adjacent cells. So cells that are right next to each other will have primary cell walls right next to each other. And those primary cell walls will have this structure known as a middle lamella between them. So they're not just going to be a primary cell wall next to a primary cell wall. It'll actually be a middle lamella. So let's say we have a primary cell wall here, primary cell wall here. What we're going to have in this middle region, this is an adjacent cell, this is a plant cell, this is a plant cell. In this middle region will be a la middle lamella. That's the name. Here, its composition is uh, a different structure, a different component, and that composition is known as pectin. P-E-C-T-I-N, pectin composition. A pectin is just going to be a cementing polysaccharide. It's a glue, essentially, cementing polysaccharide that keeps everything together. I like to think of this as glue, and it holds together the cells, so holds cells together. So the cells aren't just moving around, flip-flopping everywhere. Remember, we have to make sure that this plant is strong, it can grow tall, and we have to make sure that things sort of stay pretty much stationary as much as possible. That's why you see plants as pretty strong stationary structures. And so now you have, in addition to the secondary cell wall, in addition to this primary cell wall, in addition to vascular tissue, you now also have something known as pectin that glues together all of the cells and then um, an interesting note about fruit, like I was mentioning, when pectin dissolves, when pectin sort of gets away or degrades, that's actually one, a significant sign of ripe fruit. So fruit is not ripe when there's a lot of pectin. It's this interrupting, cementing polysaccharide that doesn't make the fruit taste sweet and uh, exactly what we really want. But when it dissolves, it becomes a ripe fruit. Um, and another sort of side note, fun fact you can walk away with is that the middle lamella is often, um, is often used as a thickener in jams and jellies. And that's it. That covers our cell walls, not a specific, uh, let's say, cell type, but a very important characteristic component of plant cells that's going to be important to look at when we move forward with the specific cell types that make up the plant anatomy.